Let's go ahead and look at some of the updates that came out in the new Bleeding Edge version of Gaia. It is now 1.3.0.5, so if you haven't downloaded it, I recommend doing it to get the latest updates. So here we have a blank scene. I already had it open, that's why there's nothing here. Let's go ahead and throw a, a node out here. Uh, we'll do plates and we'll do erosion. We're just gonna use these two to kind of get the point across of what's been implemented in these new versions of Gaia, or this new version of Gaia, I guess. So um, one of the coolest implementations in this update is uh, your ability to pull up node references within Gaia. So if you click on the plates, I'm getting a phone call. Hold. There we go. Um, when you click on a node, you'll be presented with your regular view option here and your options over here. However, now if you look into the properties, you'll have a lightning bolt. Uh, Lightning, or, <laughs> wow, uh, a light bulb. Wow, I cannot say that. A light bulb here, and this is the node quick reference. When you click on that, it gives you a quick reference of all the settings inside that node, and then it gives you a link to the documentation, which you can see here. So um, this is all being pulled from uh, Quad Spinner's documentation on um, uh, Gaia. Uh, all their documentation for Gaia and some nodes are better prepped than others so like the erosion node has lots of information that you can reference here as you can see lots of good stuff that will be updated as time goes on because there's um, you know more documentation that needs to be written and whatnot and uh, additionally this is an old feature that was included in the last update or maybe two updates ago I can't remember uh, but you can animate a turntable of your landscape and to do that, you use these hamburger menus uh, in the build tab. You can see the animator here. It comes up with another window. And you can choose where you want to save it. File names, I already have one here that I had tested right there. We'll just delete that and we do another one. Uh, and then we'll just name this whatever. You can name it whatever you want, how many frames you want. So in this case, uh, in my application, I'm gonna put these frames together. I want like a two second application or maybe a three second or three second animation. We can do 90 frames here. Uh, the resolution, I'm just gonna keep it really low just so it goes out faster, but you can do um, a, a really high resolution and it looks like these are just standard HD resolutions, this is 4K, but then you can super sample and I did a test at 4K super sampled by two times and it worked out just fine. It took a while, about 15 minutes to render out, but um, it, it works really well. And you can just choose the rotation, clockwise or counterclockwise. It's just going to rotate your landscape in that direction. And then your lighting, you can either have attached to the terrain. So as your terrain rotates, the lighting remains static on the landscape, or you can have a fixed location where your terrain rotates, but your shadows will update dynamically based on uh, that fixed location of your light and the rotation of your landscape. So uh, that's pretty nice. You can open up the animation when it's done, but uh, for now we won't do that. You can preview it, so it gives you a little preview of what's going to happen here. Um, and as you saw there, it just did a quick little turntable. That's not out of the norm for a lot of 3D applications to have. Let's go ahead and animate this, and it will go ahead and give you a full screen resolution, whatever you chose here. Uh, for your animation. And then what I use is Virtual Dub. It was a free program and it'll let you put together an image sequence. So I'll just open that, go to video file. And then here we can choose a um, image sequence right here of PNGs. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll go ahead and choose what we have here. And now it's open in Virtual Dub and we can play back that animation. It's a little bit choppy right here because uh, we have 90 frames and I don't have the frame rate set appropriately. So to change that, we'll go to video frame rate and we'll change this to 30 frames per second. That'll give us a three second animation and nice and smooth. There we go. That looks a little bit better and it'll give us an a, almost exactly a three second animation. So, uh, um, yeah, this was this was introduced in Gaia last update, I do believe. So um, it just isn't one of those more obvious options to choose 
from, you have to use the hamburger menu. Uh, other than that, there isn't a whole lot more to the updates inside of Gaia. There were some bug fixes that uh, surrounds the mesh exporter, uh, it fixes the UVs, and, um, and a few other uh, quality of life updates. But those were the two that really stuck out to me. There's a new node called the repeat node. I'm just not so sure what I would do with it. It's it's not something that I find myself really using a lot, um, but you can use it to repeat a specific node or pattern. As you see here, it's not seamless. Uh, we already have a seamless node for that, but you can increase the tiles for that repeating pattern, and it just gives you a nice little repeating pattern. So that might be useful when it comes to texture creation. If you're using Gaia for like high like high resolution procedural texturing, which is a good use for Gaia. Uh, I use Gaia for that all the time. Um, but if not, then at least uh, you have it here for whatever reason that you think you might need it for. If you find a good reason to use it or can think of something off the top of your head of why you would want to use it, put it in the comments below so other people know and so I know. I just, I don't see myself ever really using it for any reason. Um, and that could just be because I'm not necessarily adept to repeating patterns in CGI. I'm mostly procedural. That doesn't really repeat all that often. But in any case, those are the updates that I wanted to talk about. Uh, I will have future videos coming out. Life is just getting really busy. Uh, work essentially has almost mandatory overtime. Um, and my, my dad has been in the hospital for about a month. Um, it's not COVID related. He's just sick in general. Uh, he has diabetes and he's just not in good health. He had to have some blood transfusions because he had internal bleeding and that nearly killed him twice. So I'm not saying any of this to get sympathy from you guys. Um, I'm just letting you know that that's the reason why I haven't been able to post a lot of content or updates or haven't been active in the Discord. My life has just been super busy recently um, or as of late. And I just really hope that things kind of start calming down, at least with my family. That way I don't have to worry about a whole lot of drama right before the end of the year. Um, work is just going to be work. I can't get past that. So, But in any case, I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you're all staying healthy, and I will see you guys in the next video.